I, I got to tell you, this whole thing about OJ, which is an L.A. centric story, don't forget it, it. The local news, everything wall to wall, but in a good way, because it, it brought back so many memories, Eric, of all the people involved and the attorneys and Dershowitz and uh, Robert Shapiro. I, dude, I forgot all of this crap until the past couple of days. And there's so much meat on this bone that I forgot about. The, the Kardashians getting condolences to their dead father. I mean, Kim Kardashian getting tons of condolences uh, for the urban myth, which is probably true. Uh, I, I mean, there's so much crap here to go yeah. into, Eric. It's like a feeding frenzy. I had a friend. I, I don't even know where to start with this thing. I'll start with this. Just about the victims, because the victims are more important here. Um yeah. People forget a number of things that are L.A. centric that we know about that the rest of the country might not be aware of, uh, which wasn't even in the trial, was not brought up by the prosecution. Um, the killer, O.J., um, cut out the uh, silicone breast implants of Nicole because he paid for them. Uh, in the butchery that he did, people do not know that he cut out her breast implants. Just a side story to get gruesome right out of the gate, because this is about the victims. You know, Ron Goldman, his father pursuing him, the, the Nicole, the battering of Nicole, how no matter what she did, the police wouldn't help her because of the celebrity of OJ, the numerous attempts uh, to call the police before she was brutally murdered by him. Uh, there's just so much stuff about the victimization of these two people, uh, Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown, that that not enough could be said about their their victims. Now, uh, another story I learned just yesterday, which I had been aware of at the time, was that Shapiro, Robert Spiro and Robert Kardashian uh, went together to USC to speak to the dean. The secretary to the dean has kept this secret until the death Be of Oprah. Careful, don't, don't say what the crime is, but yes, go on. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, so words the, 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 yeah. The, 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 the secretary was there and she spoke afterwards. She said, what was that about to the dean? And he came out in the hallway with her and he says, you can never tell anybody about this. Uh, Kardashian and Shapiro came to make sure that uh, OJ's US USC history of being involved with uh, two young blonde girls who looked exactly like Nicole Brown. He had physically assaulted them and that was kept under wraps until yesterday, until the death when this secretary uh, finally came out and revealed how they had come to USC to make sure that this did not get out uh, during the course of the case. And I also remember them going to OJ's house and how they took away all the photos of him uh, with white blonde women in photos and removed them and placed them with children photos, how they changed the furniture in the house to make it look more genteel. Uh, incredible things that were done in this case that were never done before. Uh, and including I, I, about about Philip Van Adder, I could get into Van Adder, the, the LAPD cop, uh, both him and Furman. And I've discussed this with you before on the show. And Gonzalez knows about this. And so does uh, Al up in Poughkeepsie. Uh, the, the LAPD had a framing unit and part of the framing unit involved Furman and involved uh, Philip Van Adder and uh, Van Adder, uh, which Dershowitz talks about in that clip later on. He talks about the fact that he poured the mixed blood out of a test tube, took it home, Van Adder, of the blood of Nicole and OJ and poured it out onto OJ's sock at home. And the reason that Van Adder got caught was there was a substance, a chemical substance that was inside the test tube that came a out. Coagulation um, chemical to keep it. Yeah, that came out in the testing and they knew that he had taken home the test tube. They knew that that uh, uh, chemical was now in the blood on the sock. They had caught Van Adder red-handed. And that's the why Dershowitz says that OJ was, was acquitted, and rightfully so. And that's, I think, what Barnes is talking about. Because of the framing, uh, usually the framing is done. And they, they, he discussed this yesterday, Dershowitz. The framing is usually done by detectives to help the DA get a slam dunk in a case where they know, quote unquote, the perpetrator is guilty. Now, let me just put it that way. Uh, this is done in Dallas. It was done in the JFK case. It's done throughout uh, the nation on uh, urban police forces. Um, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they're never caught. 
this was a high profile case. Van Atta got caught, Furman got caught, and and the case was he was acquitted because of these two things. The jury never believed uh, the prosecution after that. Now to get into the prosecution is a whole nother world because of the the two people who were in the who were in the driver's seat. Marsha Clark believed, and she regretted it afterwards, she said in her memoirs, uh, that uh, gender trumped race. And she brought black women onto the jury. The jury had one white person on it, by the way. The black women and Latino women did not go for the gender over race. Clark had made a Ooh. mistake, and she wrote about it years later. She's then going every weekend to Big Bear. You can't make this up. With Christopher Darden, and they're both screwing their brains out, drunk out of their minds. They come into, they develop an affair. Uh, they're going away every single weekend, partying, the two of them in, up in Big Bear, uh, coming into the office on Monday, hungover and holding hands. This is who these this dream team is up against. Dershowitz said the other day that Christopher Darden was the worst affirmative action attorney he'd ever met. Uh, and he very rarely talks about affirmative action in a negative way because he's such a liberal. He, I was like kind of startled when he said that yesterday. He was on with uh, 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 Rob Schmidt's show on, on Newsmax uh, last night. And th the situation was Darden had an opportunity to have OJ try on the glove in the hallway privately uh, before he did it in open court. And he was so arrogant that he said, not, not necessary. And he brought it in before the jury and the case was over. Uh, as as he famously said, Johnny Cochran, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. And this allowed OJ to say certain things to the jury while he was trying on the glove, trying to get in there. It clearly fit, but he was had the plastic gloves underneath it, and he was trying to squeeze into that. He had gained weight. The gloves had shrank. It's arthritis I mean, medicine and all that. A number of factors, but the point was that Darden had the opportunity to try this not before the jury's eyes. And he said, nah, forget it. Let's just go. I always I always love that one. Um, you know, but the Marsha Clark, Christopher Darden uh, hookups were just sensationally insane. I had no idea about that. By the way, we do need to correct the record. It was Don Olmeyer who fired Norm MacDonald. Not, and not ever saw. I do remember it was Olmeyer. Oh, okay. So, All right. so this chat was right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so moving along, there were two... I don't even know where to go with this. There was a friend of mine named David Sheffield, uh, part of the Mississippi Mafia out here. Sheffield, of course, uh, famously worked at SNL, uh, which is why I was thinking of David Sheffield. He he was a uh, a writer at SNL and a producer of all the Eddie Murphy sketches and later uh, wrote the Eddie Murphy films. Um, <laughs> David Sheffield was in Musso and Franks one night and OJ comes in. And he sits down for dinner and David's at the bar with some friends. And he was a quiet guy, David Sheffield from Mississippi. And he stood up and yelled, I do not drink with murderers, sir. My check, please. And everyone looked up and he paid his check and stormed out with his friends. I was very proud of him, uh, uh, David, for doing that. But we had another friend named Joe Bosco. And I got to talk about Joe Bosco. I, there's a lot of stuff I'm involved with, and I never remembered this until yesterday. Joe Bosco was another M Mississippi writer. There was a Mississippi mafia out here of which I was an honorary member. Obviously, I'm not from Mississippi, but I hung out with these cats who were all from Mississippi in the film business and the creative business. One of them was Joe Bosco, uh, who was from Biloxi, a uh, really brilliant guy, great writer, total alcoholic, completely insane. I don't know if you have a picture of him. I, I sent you one yesterday. Maybe we could put it up. Um, Joe Bosco gets assigned one of the four seats by Judge Ito allowed in the case. And that includes Dominic Dunn, Joe McGinnis, a, a rare guy named Jeffrey Tubin, and Joe Bosco. And Joe Bosco is working on a book. Ostensibly, he's there's Joe Bosco. Um, he, uh, the late Joe Bosco, the late great uh, Mississippi Joe Bosco. He was living with Patrick Weathers, who I discussed in a previous episode, who was a friend of mine who was on SNL, who used to do Dylan impersonations. It was all about SNL today. Uh, his roommate was Patrick Weathers, uh, my old friend from SNL, and um, also lived here in Hollywood. So, Joe Bosco 
as one of the four book writers who gets a seat in the trial. The print people were rebelling against the book people because they felt these books would not come out for a year. Joe Bosco uh, wrote one of the only books at the time that said um, that O.J. was innocent. And that book didn't sell, but it's a great book. Um, how something about the prosecution screw up. I forget the title of the book um, by Joe Bosco. Anyway, Joe Bosco was kind of crazy and he was an alcoholic. And right before the trial, he dove into an empty swimming pool at night at a party and broke his neck. So he shows up at the trial with a neck brace on because he broke his neck diving into an empty swimming pool while drunk at night. Uh, that was Joe Bosco. Joe Bosco will later go to China after the trial. He'll become an English teacher in China. He will die in China, in communist China. Uh, there was some controversy that he was supporting Taiwan. Uh, he went into surgery, did not come out. Uh, not really sure what happened to Joe Bo uh, Bosco. Uh, but Joe Bosco uh, is covering the trial and Joe Bosco becomes a witness in the trial. Now, we're all freaking out because we're all watching this every day uh, because Joe Bosco's in the case. He's coming home at night, and we're hanging out with Joe Bosco, and we're watching it. It's so surreal. He gets called as a witness, invokes the California Shield Law, and says, I'm not giving up my sources. He was ostensibly writing for Penthouse at the time, but that was just the article that would lead to the book deal, which he did come out with the book. Uh, so he's working for Penthouse, writing these uh, articles that will become the book. So the, the they want his uh, sources, uh, the prosecution, and he won't give them up, takes the stand with his neck brace, and Judge Ito says, I agree with you, we're going to invoke the California Shield Law, and you will not be incarcerated. Uh, this has happened to Joe Bosco before in, in Mississippi in another case, with another crime. Mm -hmm. He... he he wrote a couple of big crime books. He also wrote a great book about the minor league Chicago Cubs team uh, the year before, where he, which is another book he wrote. Um, anyway, it just triggered. I hadn't thought about Joe Bosco in years, and I hadn't thought about these people in years. I hadn't thought about the OJ case in years. And you just wonder what happened to all these people who, who went down that road. I mean, there's Robert Shapiro's long gone, uh, uh, Dershowitz. Kardashian. Is gone. Kardashian. I mean, think about the people. Jeffrey involved. Bailey died. Um, Look what happened to Jeffrey Tubin. You see that little video I sent you with uh, OJ mocking Jeffrey Tubin when he got suspended by by um, CNN for exposing himself. I mean, this this just. I mean, there's so much pop culture around the OJ case. That elderly black woman who was a juror and said uh, we did this because of Rodney King, and mm -hmm. and the guy said you don't care, and she just smirked and said nope. Nope. I mean, they, she said, how many people in the jury thought like you? She said, about 90%. Are you I mean, included? Yes. There was one white juror is essentially what you're saying. Yeah. 90%. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, it took them 40 minutes to to vindicate him. And, and you, you know, when the people, uh, and then you've got this, Jesus Christ, you got the, the Bronco on the 405, the slow speed chase. You got Cato Kalen. I mean, that guy, the f most famous house guest in America, who later is, uh, I don't know, Celebrity Big Brother he was on. Uh, I mean, let me just get back to Detective Van Adder. Because <laughs> Detective Van Adder, this is a couple of years later. Detective Van Adder is then retired. And I wake up one day, I'm living out in the valley with Legs McNeil, the famous writer who wrote a great book called Please Kill Me on the history of punk music that I totally recommend. Legs was working on a book uh, we lived together in the valley uh, way before it became uh, unhip. <laughs> I mean, we had a we had a place in the valley that was just party central. Anyway, I wake up one morning and in the dining room is this cop, and he's not a cop in in a cop uniform. He's wearing regular clothes, but he reeks of cop. And I just go, "You look familiar," and it hit me. It's Detective Philip Van Anna sitting in my living room. And Legs is interviewing him about the history of the LAPD and porn in the Valley in the 70s for his book that he was doing on, on, uh, on uh, porn. And it was so surreal to have seen this guy, the guy accused of, of framing O.J. Simpson sitting in my dining room, uh, you know, like at 11 o'clock in the morning. So I got to talk to Van Adder for a while. I didn't bring that up, but I, we were talking about what Legs was talking about. 
uh, the history of the cops with porn in the valley in L.A. Was this uh, before or after um, the art detective that you interviewed? Uh, this was way before. Yeah, this was way okay. before the art detective. But it's also uh, Van Adder was involved in so many different things. He was involved in the Roman Polanski case when Polanski was arrested. I mean, there was so much that Van Adder um, was involved in in LAPD history. Plus, he knew where all the bodies were buried and, and, and me and Legs were just freaking out. He ends up becoming, oddly enough, a deputy sheriff in a tiny town in Indiana where he owned a piece of land so he could retire. You know what I mean? Like he retired to this farm he bought sure. in a small town, Indiana, and just became the sheriff uh, and then died of cancer like in 2012, I think. But uh, by yeah. the way, um, Go ahead. Super Chat, I'm going to interject because it, uh, you you summoned Al. Mm -hmm. So Al, Al Gonzalez said, Mark is correct. I knew NYPD guys that would take home evidence or keep it in their yeah. lockers in violation of procedure. It's a fact. Thank you. I, I mean, all these things are facts. And, and I've worked with cops before, you know, not Al, but I'm saying I've worked with cops as a reporter, you know, uh, and you learn a lot talking to cops. I've, I've drank with cops. I've hung out. I mean, I, I interview Bill Bratton when I lived in New York. And then I, there's the chief of police of New York, Bill Bratton. And then I interviewed him here when he's LAPD chief of police. I, I know cops. I mean, I don't mean bragging about it. I'm saying I know how they think. Uh, basically having interviewed them as a reporter so many times. But yeah, Van Adder took home the, the blood sample and uh, did something with it. And again, there was enough to convict, but maybe not with that incredibly stupid prosecution team. Now, there was a guy hiding in the back room. And that guy was the district attorney of Los Angeles, famously the father of a later mayor of Los Angeles. This is Gil Garcetti. Uh, the district attorney, the son will become the mayor of Los Angeles. The son will flee to India to avoid prosecution in one of the largest building trade scandals in Los Angeles history that has already jailed multiple city councilmen and is now knocking on his door. He's next in line. The deputy mayor is going to prison. Uh, he was convicted two weeks ago. Uh, a Chinese guy named Chang, I think it was like Henry Chang or something, uh, or Chan, he's going down. And Garcetti, uh, un not unlike the mayor of New York in 1950, uh, who fled to Mexico with the help of Truman uh, about, about when he was going to be indicted in 1950 in New York City. This is an old democratic trick to get people out of the country who were about to be indicted. I think we covered it on another show uh, when we were talking about uh, the mayor of New York uh, in 1950. But Philip Van Adder, um, will, along with Mark Furman, uh, will, will be remembered in history. Now, you got Judge Lance Ito, who thought he was going to go to the Supreme Court from this case. You've got Dr. Henry Lee, who makes national fame for the first time uh, with blood splatter analysis, Eric, if you remember. Uh, he will later become uh, involved in the John JonBenet Ramsey case. He'll be involved in the Lacey Peterson case, but he gets he gets his start uh, in the OJ case, Eric. Yeah, and also did. Michael mm -hmm. Bodden comes in. No, I know. I mean, it's just it's an amazing it's an amazing Hall of Fame list. Uh, yeah, there's Gil Garcetti was a DA, uh, nineteen ninety two to two thousand. Um, he will then Eric will be his son. Uh, Johnny Cochran, of course, Jeffrey Tubin gets his bones there. I mean, it's just an interesting, and I think he's played by Cuba Gooding Jr. in one of the different miniseries that came out. Um, one of the better ones. Well, I think. Cuba, doesn't Cuba What's have that? his own issues now? Or Cuba's got his own issues now with, his, with, with, with Diddy. Diddy. He may go down, <laughs> he may go, be going down with the done Diddy. He done Diddy done something. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, but anyway, I, 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 I mean, it's that. just it's just everybody is like, where were you then when this when the verdict came? Where were you there? I mean, I haven't thought about this trial in, in years. Now, he famously uh, will try to rob his own memorabilia at gunpoint to get it back uh, in Las Vegas. He'll be sentenced. He does about eight or nine years in prison. Um, yeah, he gets right. And I mean, I, dude, I just boxed this guy out. But 
you think about the Naked Gun movies, Eric. You think about the Hertz TV commercials that he did. I mean, this oh, was no, one he of the most famous, famous. He he was like the biggest celebrity sports star, star in history to that point. I had his poster in my bedroom, a Buffalo Bills poster. We all did. I mean, I had other football players, but I had an OJ Simpson full size poster in my bedroom as a kid. I mean, uh, one of the fastest runners I've ever seen. I think he did the hundred and under ten, uh, which is which is rare. And just one of the great running backs of all time um, in the Hall of Fame, uh, NFL Hall of Fame. And, and his Heisman uh, is still sitting at USC. Uh, so, uh, oh, oh, that was it, another Norm McDonald joke, by the way. Uh, he, he was congratulating whoever won the Heisman that year. He said, that's something they can't take away from you unless you kill your <laughs> wife and a waiter. <laughs> And it was a well, I mean, like the, you know, how about writing work. the book if I did it? What about that whole the, uh, spectacle? If well, I, I did I it. I interviewed his manager, and apparently he got paid cash for that book. Right. Because so they, Goldman uh, wouldn't get his get hands the, on it. Exactly. And uh, wow. it was wow. ghost written, supposedly. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyway, just uh, thank God he's dead. Uh, long live the queen. Um, these people deserve the, the victim should be remembered more than OJ Simpson. That's all I got to say, despite the White House and this. Haitian you know, lesbian. It's 30 years this year. Right, years. right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So wow. 